weeks ago. We've been as 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 a staff here and as a church here. We've we've it's, it's been a lot. I'm just glad that uh, God's grace is sufficient. So, as we go through these things and uh, any that we have several that the Lord could seem to take fit take home at any time. You know, Brother Bob's praying to go. We need to pray for mercy and grace for him. Brother Tony's been suffering this week with his breathing. He said, Lord willing, he'll come home today. And this, just by the grace of God, that we, we have what we have today. I'm glad to look out and see y'all. I'm very thankful because uh, y'all have y'all, y'all been the core. Y'all have been the backbone of our church for a long time. And we, I appreciate your faithfulness. Um, I have, you know, the last couple of weeks we've been uh, going through about slaying the giants in your life. We talked about fear. We talked about discouragement. I'm just going to go ahead and be honest with you. These are not my thoughts. Um, Brother Tim recommended a book that uh, uh, Miss Linda just talked about, Dr. David Jeremiah. He wrote this book several years ago, and he said, I, this is something that I've taught, and uh, I think this is something that, that maybe you should try for your Sunday school class. So I got the book, started reading it, and it's it's been a blessing to me, and it's amazing how where we're at today how the things we've talked about that i've needed because it's easy to be scared it's easy to be discouraged and today is we're going to talk about something that's um probably more real than we want to talk about for some of you it's more something they experience on a daily basis than than some of us do um, but today we're going to talk about slaying the giant of loneliness You know, uh, in Genesis chapter 2, I don't have a whole lot of verses today. I'm going to do a lot of talking. Um, But uh, we see that when God created Adam, he created Adam alone by himself and all the animals. But in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, this is after some uh, a period of time. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. You know, uh, Adam enjoyed the things that God created, but there was nothing there that met his needs as, as a human being. So man was created in the image of God, and we were created to be uh, people. We're social. We're social people. People, are, are need, people need people. And as a result, God saw that man should not, need to be, should not be alone. And he said, point blank, I will make him a helpmeet for him. And then uh, God had another creation sit out of the ground. The Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. So he named the animals. And whatsoever Adam called the living creature, that was the name thereof. He gave names to all the cattle and all the fowl of the air and to the every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. So God said, what is that? He named it. And all after he did all that creation again, there was nothing there for him. So it said, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed the, the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. God knew that we need companionship. And oftentimes uh, things happen that we don't have the companionship that we long for. Um, As a parent and a grandparent, sometimes we enjoy sending them home because we want our alone time. But no, as human beings, uh, we were created for each other. a, a psychologist, uh, Philip Zimbardo, writing in Psychology Today, said, There is no more destructive influence on physical and mental health than the isolation of you from me and us from them. We need each other. We need the social aspect of each other. We need the brothers and sisters in Christ aspect of each other. He also said, he points, or he points to studies that show loneliness is a central agent of depression Paranoia, schizophrenia, rape, suicide, mass murder, and a wide variety of diseases. You know, how many times do we see people that are lonely, 
do crazy things. I don't know the situation of the man that did the destruction in Massachusetts this, on Maine this week. I don't know the story. But what about the, the other folks that have done bad things because they're lonely? They feel like they're outsiders. But loneliness is dangerous. When surveys are taken to discover the central concerns of society, loneliness is always at the top of the list. Loneliness. But we were created for fellowship. We need our fellowship. We need to help each other. And what is this thing called loneliness? Um, I haven't, ex be honest, thankfully in my life, I haven't experienced it a whole lot. But I said, some of you, I look across here, you experience it on a daily basis. And I'm hopefully today as we go through this, we can try to uh, encourage each other, to encourage us to know what to do to try to overcome the loneliness that we face. Basically, loneliness is a longing for completeness. Um, you know, Miss Pullman is in the front of our brain right now because she lost Byron this week. Um, but I look across here. Y'all understand how she feels, the loneliness. So Daddy and I were talking, and what, when we go to bed at night, and we're used to the, our partner, your husband, your wife being right there. And you understand that that's, that's, that's loneliness. God understands that, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But we need to do everything we can to overcome loneliness. And God gives us the tools to do that. I'm be honest, I'm thankfully I'm not experienced, but you are, but hopefully together we can get through this lesson today and be an encouragement. I don't know how long it's going to be, how short it's going to be, but uh, I pray that it'll be a blessing and encouragement to us because at some point, at some time, we all will face the giant of loneliness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord, this is not an easy lesson this morning considering where we are, are right now in our church. Lord, uh, we've suffered some, some tragedies and some sufferings over this past year. We've lost friends that we care about. We've lost loved ones that we love and we care about. Lord, help us as we try to talk about this giant of loneliness that you can help us to overcome. Help me to say what I need to say, to be an encouragement. It's been a, a challenge to me and a concern to me to say the right things and not to say anything that would offend anybody. But Lord, I want to help people. I want to help our class. I love our class. The members of our class have been faithful to you, to our church, for many years, and we thank you for that. Bless our time together. We love you, and I see these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, but the experience of loneliness, you know, a lot of times uh, when the couples get married, they think they'll never be lonely again. But there's times that uh, uh, she works certain hours of the day, he works hours of the day, and they pass like strangers in the night. You know, being married is not always a key to loneliness. There is a resolution for the loneliness. You live in the same house, pass like ships in the night, but you try not to think about the emptiness, but by the end, you're still lonely. You know, there's, Robin and I are, are busy, um, and sometimes we don't have the, the date nights like we want to have anymore, but uh, they have the, have the lonely spouse. Thankfully, She's not lonely. I'm not, at least I don't, I'm not lonely. I don't think she is. She has Cookie, Elizabeth's dog, if nothing else. But anyway, then you have the, the, have the lonely spouse. Then you have the lonely survivor. Uh, there are a lot of survivors in this room. Look across it and see it. You've lost a loved one. You've lost your husband. You've lost your wife. And uh, somebody that we depend on. You know, like I said, life has been constructed to share our experiences, a shared feeling, shared purposes and restaurants and furniture. Your spouse has become a part of you, and now that part is gone. And right now, there's no complete healing for such a wound. But then there's other folks that have experienced divorce, and the loneliness that they experienced from being married for years, and all of a sudden, whether they're happy with that person or not, they're not there anymore. Then the, the lonely senior citizen. You know, I'm thankful for places like Robinwood because people need people. You know, um, and I'm, I'm sure it's been encouragement uh, for Miss Neva to to have 
thankfully it's not a, a frat house like you would in college, but you have neighbors that if you need somebody, they're just a door down. It's like a college dormitory. But then others that have to, are at home alone. And I, I, I know I like to visit. I wish I could visit everybody every day, but that's not physically possible. But understand, uh, your kids are not always close. Sometimes there's, they're busy, and you want them to live their lives because you want them to, to grow and be successful. But the golden years aren't supposed to be like this. We like to be close with our families and know we're getting, the Bible talks about uh, gray hair. Um, it's a gray, it says gray hair is a crown of to be honored by the community because that means experience, that means life, that means maturity. Uh, not the mark to be scorned. A lot of times people don't respect our uh, seasoned citizens. That's one way. You know, I miss Rush Limbaugh straight up. Um, the two guys that took his place do okay, but he always referred to senior adults as seasoned citizens because they've experienced life. You know, they don't always, you don't always get the respect that you deserve. It's because you have some years on you doesn't mean you're, you're valueless. You have worth. And I can learn a lot more from you and folks like my age can learn a lot more from you if we just talk to you. And that's why I like talking to you because uh, I need to learn. And I'm, uh, but the loneliness, it's not easy. Then you have the lonely sufferer. This is a, a statement from a man that was suffering in the hospital. Said, it was when the lights went out and the room was suddenly plunged into darkness that the awful awareness came. The traffic of the hospital went on like an uncontrolled fever outside my door. But inside my room, it felt like the walls were moving in, the rooms were becoming smaller. I quickly realized that the problem was my family had gone home together to their familiar safe place, but I was here alone, isolated, facing the uncertainties of what the hospital means. You have a lot of people that are lonely, suffering. You know, one person, this, well, you think about Brother Bob. He's alone, home, suffering. Think about Brother Tony. Right now he's in the hospital, suffering. And maybe you've been there yourself, but I pray that we never have to suffer alone. Then something that's uh, more on my end of loneliness is the loneliness of serving God. Um, in this world, there are a few courageous people who are willing to lay everything on the line before God. Their time, their work, even their home. They serve across the world on mission fields quietly and often forgotten. They've left behind families and friends and everything familiar. There are also people of God who serve here under a burden that weighs them down. A lot of people say it's lonely at the top, but uh, most pastors are not at the top. They're on the bottom trying to hold everybody else up. Moses said in Numbers, said, I'm not able to bear all his people, all this people alone because it's too heavy for me. You know, uh, leadership in the church often is a lonely place. So that I understand. Yes, we have friends, but God, God gives us what we need. But we need to consider that of our, our leadership. I'm not talking about myself per se. But uh, our leadership, loneliness in the service of God. I can't imagine how Mariah and Eric are going to feel when they leave in a year or so to go to Zambia with Eric and themselves. And they're, by that time, will be six kids. The loneliness there. You talk about missionaries, talking about being lonely all the time. That's why they're going out in teams now. Because you have to deal with the culture shock. But these are things that people have to face. There are examples of loneliness in the Bible. Um, you think about King David, apple of God's eye. He was lonely. He understood the subject of being lonely. He knew it was like to run and hide, hiding in the caves, scared that they were coming to kill him. Uh, Psalm 102, uh, it says, verse 1, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. David praying here, Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me. In the day when I call the answer speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke. My bones are burned as, the, as in hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass. So that I forget to eat my bread. 
Does that sound familiar? A lot of times when we get lonely, we don't eat. We don't think about it. By reason of my voice and my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. Verse 6. I am like a pelican in the wilderness. What place does a pelican have in the wilderness? Where does a pelican live? In the water. And now this next phrase. I'm like an owl in the desert. Does the owl live in the desert? No. Lives in the woods, lives in the trees. I watch and am as a sparrow alone on the housetop. David understood loneliness. Then Jeremiah the prophet, who was called the weeping prophet, he was lamented about the beloved city of Jerusalem going up in flames. He watched the people fall apart and their culture and heritage be swept away. In Jeremiah chapter 9, it says, Old up my head were waters. Did it go? There it goes. And my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Old that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men that I might leave my people and go from them for they be adulterers and assemblies of treacherous men. Basically, he wanted to check into a small motel and hide because of what he's going through. Can you, uh, and then the Apostle Paul in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul was a people person. We've talked about him and all the people he had influenced and preached to and seen one to the Lord. If, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 says, talking to Timothy, do thou diligence to come shortly unto me. What is he asking Timothy to do? Come visit. I need you. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Verse 16, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. He understood loneliness. He, he understood uh, abandonment. Demoth hath forsaken me. Can you hear the, the pain of these men in this ver these verses? God understands, and God has put people in our path that help us understand the pain of loneliness. But there's an escape. There's an escape for loneliness. We need to be, uh, we need to acknowledge that it's a real thing. We need to acknowledge that it's real. We need to be honest about our feelings. It's loneliness is painful, but it's no way of reflection of us being weak as Christians. Uh, no matter what we are in the morning when we wake up, we are human beings. We are human. We're flesh. We're bone. And we suffer and we have feelings. Um, a lot of times you talk, try to talk to somebody and they try to give you a, a, a stock reply that denies the reality of loneliness and the experience that you're feeling and the struggle that you're feeling. When you're lonely, you need encouragement, not a sermon. Sometimes, uh, just Miss Sandra walked in this morning and uh, said it's time for a hug. Sometimes we just need a hug. Because we have troubles, we have trials, we have struggles that we face every day. And it's easy to do it in a group. But we need to acknowledge it because it is part of our human experience. So maybe it's because it's not necessarily something that we did do or something we didn't do, but it's part of life, it's part of reality. But we need to acknowledge that it's real. We need to also accept that God has provision for it. God has made a way for us to overcome it. You know, remember God can only ultimately solve our problems. When you we have a, a book to read, who's better to ask about the content of the book than the author? So Jesus understands, God understands. When something is broken, if I have a car broken, do I go to McDonald's and ask for help? No, I have Chevrolets. So if I have a Chevrolet that's broken, where am I going? Right over here to MZ to see David or Lewis and say, hey, what's wrong? I need some help here. Or 
um, I've got a cold. I'm going over here to Walmart to, to the produce section to see if I can get some help. No, we go to the source where we can get help. When something's broken, we consult the manufacturer. And Jesus is our manufacturer. He created us. He's the one who made us. It's in Christ we can connect with someone who hung on a cross and ask his heavenly father, why has he forsaken me? In Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, it says, Lama, Lama, Sabachthani, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus understood being alone and carrying a heavy burden. On that cross, he was bearing every sin that was committed to that point <coughs> excuse me, and every sin that was going to be committed until the end of time. He was up there on the cross by himself when God the Father turned his back on him. I can't imagine being any more lonely than that. He understands. We can go to him. But we need to accept that Jesus is the answer for our loneliness. We also need to allow God's word to fill our minds in hearts. Psalm 27, verse 10. It says, When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. The Lord will take me up. You know, thankfully, I still have my parents. Robin still has her parents. Y'all don't. Some of you, some may be, but I think most, most are gone. But you know, the Lord didn't never, never left you alone. You know, as I said last week, talking about my grandmother, my mama did her best to see her every day. But you know how she made it through the day? I said this last week, in this book, right here. Because if you're talking to the Lord, you're not going to let the devil, the devil's not going to be in your ear telling you you're not worth anything. Your kids don't care nothing about you. You, you have no value to this world. No, that's not true. You're alive, you're breathing, you have value. Because you are a child of God if nothing else. And what's wrong with being just a child of God? Aren't we glad that we're his children? You know, we might be 99 years old. If we're saved, we're still God's child. When you get strength from God's word, he will take us up. Immerse ourselves in God's word. So we need to acknowledge our loneliness. God has given provisions for our loneliness. We need to accept it. We need to allow God's word to fill our minds and hearts. You know, don't watch the news. Don't even watch Fox News. Because it's all discouraging. God's word will pick us up. I encourage you. I have, to do, I have to do this myself even. Re read God's word. Study God's word. Listen to godly, uplifting music. You know, what did um, David do for uh, Saul when Saul was suffering? He played his harp and sang. We need, God has given us th tons of things to help us get through it. I know Robin is not a, a music person that she's been teaching kindergarten for 11 weeks. See, they've been playing uh, Pastor Pirate CDs. If you don't know what those are, they're children's CDs uh, with music and a story. Uh, the folks that have done most of the cantatas that we've done over the years, but they're designed for kids. And she's coming home singing songs because she's listening to up, uplifting godly music. And the music will de depress you, these old sad, sappy songs. But no, we don't need that. We need to listen to stuff that lifts us up and draws us closer to Jesus. And lastly, and this is very important for all of us, we need to activate our network of Christian friends. You know, we've talked about in Galatians, bear you one of those burdens. How can you bear burdens if you're not being a friend? And not letting friends, folks be friendly to you. John, 1 John 1, 7 says, or reminds us, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and we need fellowship. You know, 
Uh, right now we're spread out. But I think if anybody in this room asks anything of anybody, we would do our best to fulfill that need. You know, um, I've tried to start making visits to our class. I've visited some of you, and I enjoy it because we need fellowship. You know, um, because we need to our experiences and help to eliminate the loneliness. But a lot of times loneliness is a choice because we have a tendency to want to get depressed and not get into God's word and not lean on our people, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, our family. It can be a lifestyle. It's a choice that we make. That's why we need church. We need church. Daddy talked about it yesterday that Bethany has experienced experiencing this firsthand at, at a funeral home she works at in, in Georgia, how people come there with nothing. They have no support group. They have no family. They have no church. And until this week, I never heard of a funeral director conducting a funeral. Usually there's always been somebody there to do it, but people are so spread out today, they have no, no, no support group. Your support group is at home and at church. And if home don't got it, you got church. We need each other. We need to be at church. That's why we need church. If for no other reason to connect with other Christians that face similar circumstances. Y'all can draw strength from each other. I can draw strength from you because of your experiences. You know, we talked about several weeks ago how we can be a blessing through our experiences, through our suffering, because we understand we can help somebody. Like the things you've experienced that you can help other folks with, the things I experienced that I can help other folks with. But if we're not together, it doesn't happen. We can't do the share of those experiences. The church is our greatest source of connection. We need to use it. We need each other. I wrote down a couple things here as a challenge to myself. If we can go when we're lonely, we need to go see those that are lonely and can't go. If you have means to get out of your house and, you can, and you're lonely, go find somebody else that you know is lonely and spend time with them. I know, but I don't want to. But the thing is, what does the Bible say about being having friends? To have friends, you, you must show yourself friendly. That means, that means you have to make an effort. You have to do it. They're not obligated to come to you. God tells us to go to them. We need to be friendly. If we see some hurting and lonely, we can help. We should. If there's something we can do to help somebody and we see a need, help fix it. Try to help fix it. You know, there's something that we have lost as a people, as a church people, as a nation over the past several years. It's a word. You know what initiative means? If you see something needs to be done, do it. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. It may not get done. If you see it, God's pointed it out to you for a reason. If you have a burden about somebody, God's told you that for a reason. If you can't go, everybody's got a cell phone, right? Or a phone at home. Call them. Spend time with them. You know, every Saturday morning, Robin has a routine. She gets up, has her devotions, and then here's Mama. Let's FaceTime Mama. Then 30, 45 minutes later, here's Sister. You know, we're 600 miles apart, but because we've been blessed to have technology that we can reach out and touch somebody on the other side of the world used to have static and all this stuff, or even have party lines. Thankfully, I never experienced that. I've always had privacy on my phone calls. But we can talk to somebody anytime we want to talk to them. We need to do that. We must, and always, thinking about this, there's always somebody out there who has it worse than we do. So this morning, this is, this is different for me. Maybe this is different from you, but... We need to be an encouragement to each other. We need to encourage ourselves through God's word. And when, I, when you can't get up, I need to be there to help you get up. If you, can't, you, see, you have a friend that can't get up and you're able to help them get up, help them get up. 
You know, a lot of times, as I mentioned before, people when they fall or have issues, they get neglected, and it just makes it that much worse. But we need to invest in those that invested in us. And always look to Jesus for our strength. You know, this is, in this situation, this, this might be one of those trite, smug, stock answers, but Jesus always has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Once you're his child, you're always his child. We are in the palm of his hand. He is there to protect us. He is there to guide us. Yes, we need that spiritual instruction. We need that spiritual encouragement. But also, we need the physical encouragement, the vocal encouragement. Like I said, that, that hug, that pat on the back, that prayer that we can help each other overcome the, our, our daily loneliness, our daily needs. We need to be there for each other. And that's why I'm thankful to see y'all here as brothers and sisters in Christ because I like to see you talking. I like to see you fellowshipping because maybe we don't get out as much as we used to. We need to take advantage of the opportunities that we have. So let's, let's as we close this morning, I hope this has been... Uh, it's been more of a, it's definitely been a teaching type lesson this morning. But as we look through it, we, God understands what we're going through. He understands being alone. He loves, he understands being uh, rejected. He understands all that. And thankfully, he is with us to help us get through the same things that we face on a daily basis. But also, we need to help each other as we face this giant that we can defeat together. This is something that requires teamwork to defeat. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. Lord, thank you that you give us the tools that we need to defeat loneliness. And Lord, you understand. You've been there. But Lord, there's, uh, you cannot physically give us the hug. But Lord, you could send us and you could send somebody to us to give us that hug when we need it. To give us a chance to sit down at McDonald's or Hardee's and share a cup of coffee or a soft drink, a, a, a fry, whatever, at Smithfields, whatever, just that time just to sit down and fellowship. Lord, please help us to have the strength and the fortitude it takes to be there for each other. And Lord, if we don't help somebody to help us to be to that person what they need that day, that time, that moment to get them through the next day. Lord, thank you for my friends in this room this morning. Uh, we go back a long way with everybody. And Lord, thank you for the support they have been to my family, the church family, to those sick and to those suffering, to help us to continue to do that for each other. Lord, just bless us now as we take prayer requests for just a few moments, Lord, and as we prepare our hearts for the worship service to follow in just a moment as well. I pray you blessed today. Give us a good day. We love you and I see these things in Jesus' name. Amen.